All right, well, it's that time of week again. Time to get started recording another radio broadcast. We sure do thank you guys for watching via our social media outlets and for sharing that. That's a great blessing to us, and we pray that you'd continue to do that even today. All right, let's get started. Hey Amen. Well, it's good to be back on the radio again today. We certainly do appreciate the great opportunity that God has given us to be able to preach on these radio stations. We certainly are grateful for that. We don't take that for granted. And we're very thankful as well for faith, people who faithfully give to make this possible that we can preach on these radio stations. This is the Bear Trail Baptist Church radio broadcast, and I certainly am privileged to be the pastor there, Brother Tim Krantz. You can visit our church website, BearTrailBaptistChurch.com. That will give you information regarding our church, the location of our church, our service times, and we'd certainly be delighted to have you come by and visit with us in any and all of our services that you possibly can. Well, on last week's broadcast, we continued in Psalm 17. I think we, um, our second sermon last week in Psalm 17. And so today will be the third sermon from Psalm 17. So we will pray together, ask the Lord to help us, and then we'll get right in uh, to the psalm again today. So, Father, we sure thank you for the privilege of prayer, the opportunity to pray. We thank you, Lord, for folks who uh, make it possible for us to preach on the radio. And then, Lord, we thank you for folks who faithfully listen, that we hear from uh, on a weekly basis. We thank you for that. I pray that you would help us, Lord, and use us to be a blessing and help to others. And we'll sure thank you for that, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 17, I'll begin reading in verse number one. We made it down to verse number four. I may mention just a couple of things, but verses one through four, what we see in verses one through four is David is craving the justice or craving justice in the controversy between him and his oppressors. And in verse number one, now this is a prayer of David. We've made mention of that as well although nearly all the psalms contain prayers. There's only five psalms that are actually titled a prayer, and this is the first of those five that we have in the book of Psalms. Psalm 17, Psalm 86, Psalm 90, Psalm 102, and Psalm 142 are all labeled as a prayer. But the Bible says in verse 1, Hear the right, O Lord, attend unto my cry, give ear unto my prayer that goeth not out of Finn's lips. Let my sentence come forth from thy presence. Let thine eyes behold the things that are equal. Thou hast proved mine heart. Thou hast visited me in the night. Thou hast tried me and shalt find nothing. I am purposed that my mouth shall not transgress. Concerning the works of men, by the word of thy lips I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. Now, actually, we talked about several things from verse number four on last week as well. We talked about, uh, I think, the uh, first part of verse number four concerning the works of men. And, of course, we know that this is talking about the, their sinful practices. And we certainly know that the works of men are no good. And we talked about by the word of thy lips, about God's word being our guide. We talked about several things concerning that. We even used the example of the Lord Jesus Christ, how that he uh, was uh, tempted of Satan. And even though he was God and had all kinds of power and ability, he simply defeated him by speaking his word. What a great example to you and I, the greatest weapon that we have and the greatest weapon in all the world is the word of God. Now, I want to read this, this verse again in verse number four, and then we'll put some things together here at the end of this verse. He said, concerning the works of men, by the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. Now, the destroyer, the violent man, we're talking about Satan himself. And David, it says, here, by the word of thy lips, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. David here is giving you and I the example that by the word of the Lord or the word of the Lord has kept him away from the path or out of the path of the destroyer. 
There's several places in the Bible I would like to look how that the word of the Lord has kept men, especially Peter. I'll probably look at the example of Peter primarily, how that the word of the Lord kept him from the path of the destroyer. Now, the Bible says in Luke chapter 22, verse 31, And the Lord said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan hath desired to have you, that he may sift you as wheat. But I have prayed for thee that thy faith fail not, and when thou art converted, strengthen thy brethren. Now, it's going to be very evident that Peter failed, but the Lord prayed for and held him up. Aren't you glad that the Lord is praying for you and I? Aren't you glad that the Lord is holding you and I up? This crowd that thinks or has this idea or this mentality that they're holding themselves up, what a puny strength, what a, what a great weakness that is. I'm glad that the Lord is holding me up, amen, just as he held Peter up. Now listen, the Lord warned Peter that Satan desired to have him, and the reason that Satan desired to have him is so he could destroy him. Now listen, Satan didn't come to Peter with horns and a pitchfork, as you see the, the portrays and the pictures and things of that sort. He didn't even come to Peter with money. He didn't use power. He didn't use prestige. He didn't use a beautiful woman. Now, Satan has, and Satan certainly will use all of these things. These are some of the wiles of the devil, some of the tricks of the devil. He'll use all of these things. But the way that he came at Peter was by using events in Peter's life that Peter didn't like. Now, I think we can see at least two things here in Peter's life that Satan used on him to cause him to deny the Lord. The first thing is this. Now, you listen very carefully. The first thing that Satan used was this. Peter got the poochy lip when Jesus rebuked him. In other words, the Lord Jesus Christ rebuked him for something that he did. And instead of taking the rebuke and going on, Peter got upset about it. He got mad about it. Now, listen, I, I know a lot of folks. I know a lot of folks. Been pastoring a lot of years. I know a lot of folks. The word of God has rebuked their life. The word of God has rebuked instances in their life. It has rebuked things in their life. And instead of them being willing to be obedient to God and getting that thing right, they got the poochy lip. They got mad and they got completely out of the way of God, completely out of the will of God, and their lives are completely destroyed because of it. Anyway, Peter got the poochy lip when Jesus rebuked him. See, here's what happened. Peter stood up for the Lord in the Garden of Gethsemane when they were coming to arrest the Lord Jesus Christ, and Peter drew out his sword and cut off Malchus's ear. Now, Peter was probably expecting the Lord to praise him for his act of bravery, but instead the Lord rebuked him for his ignorance. And I'm afraid there's a lot of people, they, they've been wanting the Lord to clap his hands and pat them on the back that's for something that they did. And instead, the Lord told them how stupid they was for behaving like that, and they couldn't take it. That's exactly what happened to Peter. The Bible says in John chapter 18, verse number 10, it says, Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, and smote off the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear, and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, Put up thy sword into the sheath, the cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Now listen, after this happened, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, all three record the fact that Peter followed him afar off. Now listen, I want to ask you, we're talking about the destroyer. We're talking about the violent man. Our text, Psalm 17, verse number four, I have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. So listen, here's what we have. Satan is very subtle. He would like nothing better than to make you angry. He would like nothing better than to make you bitter at the Lord's rebuke. If Satan can cause you to follow the Lord afar off because you disagree with what the Lord says or what the Lord does, he will eventually destroy your life. Listen, there's a lot of folks. There's a lot of, I believe they're saved. They trusted the Lord Jesus Christ for their savior. They began to walk with him. They began to follow him. And then the preaching of the word, the teaching of the word, or even their reading of the word, the Bible began to rebuke their sinful lifestyle. The Bible began to rebuke practices in their life. 
The Bible began to rebuke how they raised their children. The Bible began to rebuke about the places that they go. The Bible began to rebuke about the clothes that they wear. The Bible began to rebuke about the vocabulary that they use. The Bible began to rebuke about the movies that they watch and the TV that they watch. And they got the poochy lip with God and they began to follow him afar off. And so they have wound up in the same situation that Peter is at this time. So the first reason I believe that, that Peter denied the Lord is because he got the poochy lip when God rebuked him. The second reason, the second reason that I think that Peter denied the Lord is I think he denied him because of fear. I think he denied him because of fear. Now, I'm going to read some verses of scripture. I'm going to make some connections. I'm going to make some comments. I want to tell you right now, there is a, it is amazing. I am almost set back and appalled at the number of people who are afraid, who are scared to death. They're, they're, they have completely forgotten about the God that they serve. They have completely forgotten about his power and his ability, and they're living their lives in absolute fear. Peter here, he followed the Lord afar off. He denied God three times. And one of those reasons is because of fear. The Bible says in John 18, verse number 19, the Bible said the high priest then asked Jesus, then asked Jesus of his disciples and of his doctrine. Jesus answered him, I spake openly to the world. I ever told in the synagogue and in the temple, whether the Jews always resort and in secret have I said nothing. Why askest thou me? Ask them which heard me what I have said unto them. Behold, they know what I said. And when he had spoken this, one of the officers which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand, saying, Answerest thou the high priest so? Jesus answered him, If I have spoken evil, bear witness of the evil. But if well, why smitest thou me? Now Ananias had sent him bound unto Caiaphas, the high priest, and Simon Peter stood and warmed himself. Then said, therefore, uh, they said therefore unto him, Art not thou also one of his disciples? Now look, here's what Peter did. He denied it and said, I am not. One of the servants of the high priest, being the kinsman whose ear Peter cut off, now I would think if you cut my ear off, I'd probably recognize your face, amen. And so he said, one of the kinsmen whose ear Peter cut off said, did not I see thee in the garden with him? Verse number 27 says, Peter then denied again and immediately the cock crew. Now, Peter may have denied the Lord this time because he was afraid of what those men would do in, do to him. Now, the scripture says here, we saw it, that the officer which stood by struck Jesus with the palm of his hand. The Bible says in Matthew, now we read that from the gospel of John, but the Bible says in Matthew that they did spit in his face, they buffeted him, and others smote him with the palms of their hands, saying, prophesy unto us, thou Christ, who is he that smote thee? So here's what we see from the scripture. They spit on him. They buffeted him, which means to strike with a fist. They slapped him with the palms of their hands. They mocked him. It is clear from the example that we have here that Peter, it's clear from the example that we have here, have of Peter in the Bible that the destroyer, Satan, that's what we're talking about. Psalm 17, verse number four, the word of God hath kept me from the destroyer, from the violent man, from Satan. And so it is clear here, we see in scripture that, that Peter became afraid. He was afraid that what they were doing to the Lord Jesus Christ, they were going to do to him if he did not deny the Lord. Now, aren't you glad that Satan prayed for him? that his faith would fail not. Now, I tell you what we're going, we're going to have to do. This, this is what the scripture says. Concerning the words, we're back in our song, 17.4. Concerning the words of men, by the word of thy, talking about the Lord, by the word of thy lips have kept me from the paths of the destroyer. Listen, the only way, the only way you're going to stay away or stay out of the path of the destroyer is if you take heed to what does set the Lord. Listen, it's not enough just to hear 
what God says. Now, that's important. I'm not downplaying that at all. The Bible says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We must hear what thus saith the Lord. But listen, you can hear preaching your whole life. You can hear Bible teaching your whole life. You can read the Bible every single day. But if you never take heed to what you hear, your life is on a road to destruction. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 12, it says, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. The Bible says in 1 Peter 5, 8, Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Listen, friend. You can't stand against that kind of enemy. You can't fight against that kind of enemy in your own power and in your own ability. You better take heed to what thus saith the Lord in his word. David said, that's the only hope I have. That's all the hope I needed, amen. I could take heed to God's word. Now, come back to our text. Come back to our text. Verse number five. Now, verse number five and six, we start another different little section here in these passages of scripture. What we're going to see here in verses five and six is David. David is going to ask for grace from God to act or behave righteously or to act right when under trial. Now, I'll tell you, you know, I need in our life, trials are going to come. You may be in the midst of a great storm now. If you're not, you probably just came out of one. I think it was Mays Jackson who said we're either uh, we either just came out of a storm or we're in a storm or we're headed into a storm. And uh, so we, we're, we, need to, we need to learn how by God's help and God's grace to act right when we are in a storm. And so that's what David is doing. He's fixing to ask God to ask him to, to help him to behave the way that he should even under trial. Look what the Bible says, verses five and six. He said, hold up my goings in thy paths that my footsteps slip not. I have called upon thee, for thou wilt hear me, O God. Incline thine ear unto me, and hear my speech. Now, here in verse number five, he said, Hold up my goings in thy path, that my footsteps slip not. Now, here's the Bible verse in one little short verse. This Bible verse has the answer to the old, the old question, who, what, when, where, and why. He said, first of all, hold up. Who? Who? Who's David asking to hold up? He's asking God to hold him up. David is conscious of his own wickedness to keep him in God's path. What is he asking for? My goings. Now, when? Now, in this present time, it is ongoing. He is asking God to help him with his goings right now. Where does he want to go? In thy past. Why does he want to do that? That my footsteps slip not. Listen, friend, we need God's help, especially when we're under trial, especially when we're in a, a, a heartache or a conflict or a situation or a problem that we can't control upon our own. We must have God's help. So the psalmist said, the Bible says in Psalm 18, 36, thou hast enlarged my steps under me that my feet did not slip. Psalm 94, 18 says, when I said my foot slippeth, thy mercy, O Lord, held me up. Psalm 119, verse 15, the Bible says, Depart from me, ye evildoers, for I will keep the commandments of, a, of my God. Verse 16 says, Uphold me according to thy word, that I may live, and let me not be ashamed of my hope. Verse 7, 117 says, Hold thou me up, and I shall be safe, and I will have respect unto thy statutes continually. If you notice there in that psalm, 119 verses 15 through 17, David made mention of the fact that God was going to hold him up. And the way that God was going to hold him up was through his word. Now, that's the same thing that we've seen in the previous verse here in Psalm 17. We must be upheld by the word of the Lord. Listen, friend, it's not enough that you tell me you believe the Bible. It's not enough to, to, for you to tell me that you agree with God's word. When the life that you are living is going in a complete opposite direction of what the Bible is teaching, then I have no confidence in what thus saith your mouth. Your life is going in a complete opposite direction of what the Bible says. Now, if you will be obedient to what thus saith the Lord, he will uphold you. The Bible says in Psalm 121, 
In verse number one, it says, I will lift up mine eyes into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Listen, friend, if you've moved away from the truth of God's word, if you've moved away from fellowship with God, if you've moved away from the fellowship with God's people, it certainly isn't God's fault. Listen, there's one of two reasons. It's because you've either refused to hear the preaching by not by not making yourself available to hear the preaching or because you have no desire to take heed to what thus saith the word of the Lord. Now, come back to our text, Psalm 17 and verse number six. David said, I have called upon thee, for thou wilt hear me. O God, incline thine ear unto me and hear my speech. Now, the first thing that I notice about this little verse when we read it is the confidence that David has in his prayer being answered. I like what he said. I have called and thou wilt hear. Ain't that a blessing? Isn't that that a blessing? You, You call for your spouse and they hear. You call for your children and they hear. Aren't you glad you can call unto the Lord? And the Bible says, David said, I have called and thou will hear. Listen, thou hast always heard me. Oh, my Lord, and therefore I have confidence that you will hear me again. Listen, I like this. Experience is a blessed teacher. Listen, when you've tried the faithfulness of God, when you've been in that situation before, when you've been in circumstances like that before, when you've been in conditions in your life like that before, and you called upon God and he delivered you, he helped you, he was there in your time of need, it gives you great confidence that he'll be there again. And so that's what we have. David said, I have called, thou will hear. This is not the first time David has called. This is not the first time that God has heard. This will not be the last time that David calls. This will not be the last time that God hears. Aren't you glad that we can call unto him and he will answer us? Listen, I think this, this is a great little verse. There's several things about this, about this verse that is great. There are two words, two words, both great though little. He said, call and hear. I call thou hear. There's two persons. There's the one little I. Poor puny little old me, poor puny little old David, we can call unto thee, who is the great God, amen. And there's two tenses, I have in the past, and thou wilt in the future. I have called in the past, thou wilt hear in the future. There's two wonders. Well, first of all, why don't we call more? And second of all, that God hears such unworthy prayers from such unworthy people. So I am glad that we can call and I'm glad that God will hear. The psalmist said in Psalm 55 verse 16, as for me, I will call upon the Lord and the Lord shall save me. The Bible says in Psalm 66 and verse number 18, the Bible says, if I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me, but verily God hath heard me. He hath attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. Aren't you glad that God will not turn away our prayer? Aren't you glad that God will not turn away his mercy from us? The Bible says that his mercy is endureth forever, that his mercy is everlasting. Listen, you know what mercy is? Mercy is unmerited favor. I've done nothing to deserve the mercy of God. You've done nothing to deserve the mercy of God. It is simply God's character that he has mercy upon us. And so why would we not call out to him in our time of trouble? The Bible says in Psalm 116, in verse number one, he said, I love the Lord. Why? Why? Because he hath heard my voice and my supplication. Can you say with the psalmist that I love the Lord? And one of the reasons that you can give, the Bible gives several reasons for us loving the Lord. The Bible says, I love him because he first loved me. That's true. Amen. The psalmist says here, I love the Lord because he hath heard the voice of my supplication. You know what improve your love for God? You know what will strengthen your love for God? When you, I, who are unworthy, who are feeble, who are weak, who are full of fear, who oftentimes get the poochy lip because God rebukes us, and yet when we call unto him, he is faithful to hear the voice of my supplication. He said here in this psalm, 
Psalm, in verse one, Psalm 116, verse 1, I love the Lord because he hath heard my voice and my supplication. Verse 2 says this, because he hath inclined his ear unto me. Now look, look, listen. Therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. Amen. David said, I'm going to call upon him as long as I live. Why wouldn't I? I, I'm unworthy. I'm undeserving. I'm unfit. I am feeble. I am weak. I'm oftentimes angry. I'm sinful. And yet God in his mercy, amen, will hear when I call upon him. Therefore, I'm just going to determine that I'm going to call upon him as long as I live. Listen, we're living in uncertain times. We're living in dangerous times. We're living in the perilous times that the Bible proclaims. Many of God's people, they have succumbed to fear. They, they have the, the rebuke of God's word have caused them to be angry instead of repentant. The fear of man has become a snare unto them and caused them to stumble. Listen, friend, even today in that situation and in that mind frame and in that, that set of, in your mind, you can call unto God and in his mercy, he'll answer your prayer. No wonder the psalmist said, therefore, I will call upon him as long as I live. Friend, who else are you going to call on? Who are you going to turn to? If you turn to the doctor in this time of trouble instead of the Lord, you're going to be in great trouble. You turn to the counsel of men instead of the counsel of God's word, you're going to be in trouble. You turn away from what God says is right because man said something else and you believe him above man, you're going to be in trouble. I'm glad we can trust God in spite of man. I'm glad we can trust God in spite of the fear of man. I'm glad we can trust God in the face of fear of an enemy. I'm thankful that we can trust the Lord. Now, here's why. The Bible says, come back to our text, Psalm 17. I'm running out of time. Psalm 17, verse number seven says this. Shew thy marvelous love and kindness, O thou that savest by thy right hand them which put their trust in thee from those that rise up against them. Listen, we have an enemy that we cannot see. We have a strange enemy that's risen up against us. And the answer to that is we need to see God's marvelous loving kindness. How are we going to see God's marvelous loving kindness? We're going to see it because thou savest. He is going to be the one that saves us by his right hand. You're not going to be saved by some miracle doctor. You're not going to be saved by some miracle drug. You're not going to be saved by some vaccine. Our hope and our trust is in the Lord. He is our marvelous redeemer. He is full of loving kindness. My faith is fully and steadfastly in the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. I am dependent upon him. David here, show thy marvelous love and kindness. David is in imminent danger. And though, listen, David is a great warrior all in his own right. In fact, he has the reputation for killing a bear and killing a lion with his bare hands. He has the reputation of slaying the giant with simply a sling and a rock. And yet he understands that there is enemies that he is no match for. And listen, we have enemies that we are no match for as well. And so you know what David does? Instead of relying on his own strength, instead of relying on his own ability, instead of relying on his past accomplishments. Amen. Listen, I, I know a lot, a lot of good intentioned people who, who are saved people. They're relying solely in their past experience. David is not relying upon that. He is relying upon the marvelous loving kindness of the Lord to deliver him. I have all of my faith, all of my confidence, all of my trust in the marvelous loving kindness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, I, I'm out of time. But I want to read you this quote from the treasury of David concerning this, this verse of scripture, show thy marvelous loving kindness. Listen, O Lord, shew thy marvelous loving kindness. Shew it to my intellect and remove my ignorance. Show it to my heart and revive my gratitude. Show it to my faith and renew my confidence. Show it to my experience and deliver me from all my fears. You know what we need to see? We need to see the marvelous loving kindness of the Lord Jesus Christ. Preacher, how do we do that? By being obedient to God's word. Amen. All right, my time is quickly coming on again today as it always does. But I am so grateful and so thankful that you have tuned in with us again today. I hope you'll do that again next week. Same place, same time. Until then, may God richly bless you is our prayer. Goodbye and good day. All right. Thank you so much for watching on our, 
uh, Facebook and also our YouTube channel. We greatly appreciate that. Be a tremendous blessing to us if you would like and share that so we could reach as many people as we could, that we certainly would uh, not take that for granted. It'd be a great blessing to us. All right. Hope you have a great day. Goodbye. God bless.